This week in February of 2021 will mark an important milestone in Mars exploration. The Perseverance, which is part of the Mars 2020 mission, will be landing on Mars after a seven-month trip through the 189 million kilometers that separate Mars and Earth. It will be the fifth rover mission to Mars. It is the successor to the Curiosity rover that went to Mars in 2012. Perseverance is the most advanced rover that NASA has ever made. It carries instruments such as a much higher resolution camera than previous missions, an experiment to generate oxygen, and even a helicopter. The major goal of Perseverance is to investigate the astrobiology on Mars to find out whether life ever existed there. Perseverance looks very similar to Curiosity on the outside, but it now carries different instruments that are specifically for finding biosignatures of ancient life. The main way that it plans to do this is by drilling samples of the Martian surface and then analyzing the samples and the gases that it collected through an onboard miniature lab, then sending the results back to Earth to be further analyzed. There is also a plan to store some of the samples on board because there could be a future mission to bring those samples back to Earth. At first, it seems a bit counterintuitive that it stores samples to bring back on another mission. The reason that NASA plans to do this is because they want to store samples that are as uncontaminated by Earth materials as possible. So that way, if somehow Earth organic material gets there on some other mission, we'll have the pristine samples that Perseverance collected. These samples are put into a separate tube by a second arm that is under the belly of the Perseverance. One of the biggest differences between Curiosity and Perseverance is that it has a much quicker and improved autonomous driving capabilities. Perseverance can do up to 200 meters per day, which is a lot more than Curiosity could do. This is because Curiosity has to take a look at its surroundings, process that information, then drive according to the instructions that it has given itself, then repeat the steps. Perseverance, on the other hand, can do all these tasks as it is driving without having to pause. This will greatly increase the distance that is covered by Perseverance. Another thing that Perseverance carries are microphones, which will enable us to hear Mars. Perseverance also has much more higher resolution cameras than Curiosity. While Curiosity at most only had a 2 megapixel camera, Perseverance's biggest camera will be a full color 20 megapixel one. That, along with the microphones, will give us a truly immersive experience of Mars. It also carries an X-ray spectrometer along with a UV laser that can scan the Martian surface. One of the experiments that Perseverance carries on board is one that will most likely be helpful for future manned missions to Mars. It is an experiment called MOXIE. MOXIE is supposed to produce oxygen on Mars. Mars's atmosphere is very thin. It's like only 1% of Earth's atmosphere. Of that, 96% of Mars' atmosphere is carbon dioxide, and less than half a percent is oxygen. This experiment will send back vital data to study how to generate oxygen on Mars for future missions. Perhaps the most impressive thing about Perseverance might possibly be that it carries a helicopter named Ingenuity on board. It is attached to the belly of the Perseverance. Ingenuity is a technology demonstration to test powered flight on another planet. Its mission is not to do scientific studies. Its purpose is to get as much information about how flying an aircraft on Mars is so future missions can benefit from this data. Getting a helicopter to fly on Mars is not as straightforward as it might seem. This is due to multiple reasons. One is that Mars's atmosphere is only about 1% the density as it is here on Earth. This means that flying Ingenuity on Mars is the equivalent at flying at 100,000 feet here on Earth. The world record for the highest any helicopter has flown is 40,800 feet. One advantage about flying on Mars is that the gravity is only about 38% of Earth's. This means that it needs to carry less weight than it would on Earth. Even though it's flying in a place with less gravity, the whole craft weighs only about 4 pounds. Ingenuity is meant to fly for about a minute and a half at a time, all autonomously using its suite of cameras and sensors that are on board. As for powering all these bells and whistles, Perseverance is using an RTG, 
which is very similar to the one that Curiosity was using. In case you're wondering what an RTG is, it uses the heat of the radioactive decay of plutonium and turns it into electricity through something called the Seebeck effect. Seebeck allows us to create energy by a heat differential. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but what I'm trying to say is that it's a very reliable source of energy. The Perseverance was launched on July 30th, 2020, aboard the Atlas V rocket. Launching to Mars isn't as straightforward as it might appear. Since Earth and Mars have different orbit speeds, the Perseverance has to be launched in a time where it would take the shortest amount of time to travel to Mars. This window only appears once every two and a half years. This window only tends to last for about four to five weeks. In between takeoff and landing on Mars, there's a six to eight month trip that Perseverance has to survive. The entire time that Perseverance is on the way there, checks are constantly being run to make sure that the Perseverance and its systems are healthy in the immense cold of space. This would be a good time to talk about the segments of the mission. This whole thing here is the Mars 2020 mission. This top part is the crew stage which contains solar panels and some other bits and bobs such as thrusters that help with the crew's portion of the mission. Once we get close to Mars, we discard the crew stage. The next part is called the entry capsule, which holds all the landing gear and the perseverance itself. It also contains thrusters that can fine tune the heading of the mission. This is the sky crane, which we'll get into a bit later. The location that was chosen for the Mars 2020 mission is a place called Jezero Crater. Jezero was chosen because it was believed that it carried a lake many millions of years ago. Wherever we find life on Earth, we usually find water. So it made sense to go to a place on Mars that was also believed to hold water. But not all craters that might have had water were suitable candidates because most craters aren't believed to hold evidence of water. Jezero, on the other hand, was full of water. So full, in fact, that it had an inflow channel and an outflow channel. In Jezero, you have one of the most well-preserved delta deposits on Mars, making it one of the best places for harboring life in the past and holding evidence of that life till today. Jezero was actually one of the candidates for the Curiosity mission, but another location was chosen because Jezero was deemed unsafe. The landing technology back then was just not good enough to land in such a tricky location. Speaking about the landing technology, this is one of the most improved aspects of the mission. The rover will go through something called 7 minutes of terror as it comes down through the atmosphere. In this gap, the rover needs to slow down drastically and come to a soft landing all autonomously because it would take too long to send commands from Earth. The Perseverance is using a very similar sky crane system, just as Curiosity was using, but with improvements. The reason that NASA stuck with the sky crane system this time as well was because it worked excellently for Curiosity, and NASA is hoping to replicate that success with the Perseverance. One new technology here is terrain relative navigation, which is where the craft will scan the ground using a suite of ground sensors and then guide itself to a soft landing. I'll begin before it enters the atmosphere. At a bit of a distance from Mars, we make sure that the spacecraft is oriented the correct way for landing on Mars. We also jettison the cruise phase which I talked a bit about earlier. Then, using thrusters on the capsule, it orients itself to the correct position for entry. As we enter the atmosphere, Perseverance will start to perform some maneuvers known as S maneuvers to control itself as it descends through the atmosphere. This is so that it can control the distance to the landing location. This is the portion in which the heat shield is being used to protect the Perseverance. As it descends, it's constantly monitoring the distance to the ground so that way it knows exactly when to deploy the parachute such that it will land as close to points of interest as possible. Otherwise, it might land far away from these places and it would end up using valuable time to drive over there. After deploying the parachute, the craft slows down to about 100 meters per second, which is much slower but nowhere near how slow it needs to be going to land. 
It is at this stage that we also jettison the heat shield. This is the first time that the terrain relative navigation system gets to see the ground and starts scanning the ground for where to land. Then Perseverance along with the Sky Crane separate from the capsule and start flying towards the landing location that the TRN system found. It comes to a complete stop above its landing location, then it starts to slowly descend towards the ground. From here, it starts to look really similar to how the Curiosity was set down on the ground. Once it's close enough to the Martian surface, Perseverance is slowly lowered from the Sky Crane on cables. As this is happening, the wheels are deployed. Once the Perseverance touches down, these cables are cut away and the landing stage flies away and crashes in the distance. After all of this, this massive rocket comes down to this. Now that the Perseverance is on the ground, it's ready to start its mission. I personally can't wait for Perseverance to land and start sending back some awesome data and pictures with that insane camera and microphone of its. Once it starts carrying through with the mission, who knows what we'll find. Might even be life.